So today I had an interesting conversation with a friend of mine. As you definitely know, I'm a watch collector and definitely a watch enthusiast. What you may or may not know is that I'm actually a huge movie fan as well. And so bridging these two topics together kind of made me think about something. We were talking about a couple favorite movies, and in those movies, no one wore watches. But I know there's plenty of movies out there where the star or the starlet does wear a watch. And for some odd reason, these watches, well, they're just, I, I guess they're more popular secondary to the movie that they're in. And I kind of made me ask a question. Do you really care if the actor or the actress wears a special watch? Does it make that watch more important to you? Let's see what you think. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. My name is Patrick W. And as I kind of went over in the intro, I'm a movie fan who's also a watch fan. And so how better to bridge the two than to kind of ask a general question about watches and movies. So I was chatting with a buddy of mine who happens to also be a Patreon member of mine. And we've got a, a special chat just for uh, Pocket Watch Time group members. And today we were talking about watches and that led into talking about movies and somehow we then, of course, talked about watches in movies. And I just thought it was kind of an interesting topic because I think a lot of people out there kind of give watches that are in certain movies maybe more hype, more prestige, more clout just because of the movie they're in. And coming from me personally as you know a movie collector and as a watch collector, I, I just don't really care. I mean... Some of the movies we were talking about didn't have a, a watch in it. So I, I was talking about Shawshank Redemption, which is probably my favorite movie of all movies. Somehow The Last Samurai came up. I think we were talking about something to do with Japanese culture and probably a, a Seiko Shaw pocket watch in there. And he'd never seen the movie The Last Samurai, so I definitely recommended it to him. And he then, of course, threw one of his favorites back at me, which is Gattaca. And being a huge sci-fi nerd, as well as a movie nerd, of course, Gattaca is on the list. In that movie, besides a, a watch phone thing that I think they send a message to, there really wasn't a highlighted wristwatch. And to me, that's fine. If someone was wearing a watch that was a special watch in that movie, I don't think it would really make me like the watch any better. And that just kind of brought up some of the, the popular ones that everybody talks about. And the one that I know is in the news now is Marlon Brando's Rolex from Apocalypse Now. This watch was sold, I think, in 2019 for almost $2 million. And yeah, Apocalypse Now is a good movie. It's not one of my favorite movies. It's one of those movies that I think it's a little bit more credit than, you know, I would give it. But, you know, it's still a good movie. I thought Marlon Brando's part was actually so irrelevant that, you know, he's probably one of my least favorite actors in the movie. He doesn't even have that much time in the movie. But I guess somewhere creeping in the dark shadows of the movie, you can make out the fact that he's wearing a Rolex. And I guess the real Rolex people out there realize that it's a Rolex Pepsi GMT, which I never would have known from watching the movie. I guess for whatever reason, Marlon Brando thought it would be cool to knock off the bezel and he replaced the metal bracelet with a rubber strap. So it really looks almost nothing like a Rolex GMT Pepsi. But I guess because he carved his initials in the back of it and it was in a movie, it's going for big money. It's now up for auction again. So whoever bought it four years ago, I guess decided it wasn't that important to them to keep forever, or maybe they're just sensing a dip in the market and they're going to take advantage of it while they can. Can't tell you which one. But that watch is coming up for auction, and once again, just because of the movie, I think it's getting a lot of extra clout. For me, I kind of already spilled the beans. You know, it's not really that important, but I'm kind of curious if it is to you. Would you buy that watch if you had, you know, unlimited means, limited monies, does the fact that that watch was in that movie important to you? 
or that Marlon Brando wore it important for me? No, but I'm kind of curious to know what the rest of the watch community thinks of. And well, I've got a couple other big time movies, which one I'm going to probably annoy a lot of people with. And of course, that's the whole James Bond thing. Oh man, don't get me wrong. James Bond movies are fun. I've never been a huge James Bond fan. You know, generally speaking, it's just a an action movie. I definitely like Jason Bourne movies better. I definitely like Mission Impossible movies better. But James Bond, you know, has its place in that genre of film. And of course, since the beginning, his watch has been something very important to a lot of people. Whether Rolex or Omega is fighting for sponsorship or people who watch those movies dare say that, you know, James Bond is a true Rolex guy or an Omega guy, you know, the fans out there love it so much that they're actually almost fighting for what is James Bond? Is he an Omega guy? Is he a Rolex guy? Is he both? Hmm. As I said, I don't even know where to start. You know, I definitely think there's a, to me, the most famous watch that James Bond wears, and, and that's the Golden Eye Omega. And, you know, I, I just think that one's the, probably the most classic for me. But that watch, because of James Bond wearing it on his wrist, I mean, it, it's not any more important than any other Omega Seamaster. And it's a nice looking watch, and they just came out with the 60th anniversary of this year, which is a nice looking watch. But it still just, it doesn't do anything for me. I don't want to watch that James Bond wore, and I don't care that James Bond wore it. It doesn't make it better, worse, it's still the same watch. So, just kind of interested in what you think. So I could go all day talking about different watches and different movies, but I'm going to go over a couple that are just kind of interesting to me. So I love sci-fi movies, as I stated a little bit earlier. In Interstellar, there's a Hamilton watch that the lead character wears, and you know, I love the movie. I think it's a beautiful movie. I could watch it over and over and over again. I love that they incorporated a watch into the movie, but the fact that that watch was in it, it's no different whether it was a Hamilton or whether it was a Seiko or a Casio. It just doesn't matter. I just look at the watch and I say, eh, okay, it's like a boring looking field watch. I'm not interested. Even though it's in a movie that I love, it still doesn't make me want to buy that watch. A similar movie, I love Aliens, and the Aliens Ripley watch is absolutely cool. Ugly cool, but pretty darn cool. Would I buy it? No. No, I wouldn't, because it's just a little too weird, and that's coming from a guy who likes weird watches. But I will give you guys a heads up. I've got a weird Seiko, kind of alien-inspired, coming to the channel real soon, so keep your eyes out for that. So going from one Seiko to another, maybe to a Casio, even a Bremont, which I have to give a little bit of credit to the brand. That's pretty cool that they put it in an English movie. You know, we've got also Panerai's, we've got more Rolex. Wait a minute, that's not a Rolex. Okay, this is a cool story. So another movie of mine that I, I, I enjoy is American Psycho. And it's an odd movie. If you've never seen it, it's got Christian Bale. Also in this list for Batman, he wore a pretty cool JLC in there. But in this movie, he is pretty much a, a hype beast before hype beasts were a thing. And he was supposedly wearing a Rolex day date, or maybe it was just a date just. But in this movie, he actually isn't. And I think that's so cool because this movie had a really negative theme to it. I mean, the guy's a psychopath murderer. So Rolex wanted absolutely nothing to do with the main, the main star wearing this watch. And instead of not wearing it, they wore a watch that looks very, very much like it. And this just came out recently within the last couple of years. I think most publications for years and years still say that, you know, Christian Bale was wearing a Rolex Datejust in the movie. And it's now come to light that he was actually just wearing a two-tone Seiko. So a good old fashioned Seiko 5. So I think it's just a really cool story of how, you know, even the hype people want to make that movie into more of a hype thing, making sure that he's wearing a Rolex because at that time you were successful if you wore a Rolex. But in fact, he's actually wearing a Seiko. So just kind of a cool little story. So besides skipping maybe a Porsche design chronograph, 
I can't really think of too many other watches that are in movies that really are different. So that's your homework for watching this video. If you can think of any watches out there that you know weren't really covered or just a watch that you really think is interesting that's found itself in a movie, I'd love to hear about it. So as I said, I'm a movie fan, a watch fan, so putting those two pieces together is just kind of fun. So in the comments, please put a watch and put a movie collaboration that you really enjoy. It's fun to read and hey, it helps the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to join the discussion, you can always join my Patreon. The link's down in the description. You get to join the, the wild talk in the private chat and you can throw in your own opinions on pocket watches, regular watches, or maybe even a movie here or there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave that like and that comment, and I'll catch you next week in a new episode. If you enjoyed this content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. I make weekly videos regarding tons of horological topics, including wristwatches, pocket watches, and current topics regarding watch collecting and the watch market in general. Please leave a like, or maybe even a comment or a question. The YouTube algorithm loves it when you do that, and it helps the channel. And speaking of helping the channel, I've got two avenues where you can donate to the channel. You can join right here on YouTube by becoming a YouTube member, or you can follow the link in the description and join my Patreon. Thank you, I really do appreciate it.